Uh, welcome back, guys. Uh, today I decided to do a review of a distro, Sparky Linux. Now they have a new 4.0 uh, version. I haven't tried Sparky before, but as I said, I do I do like uh, Debian uh, systems. And uh, this Sparky Linux seemed to be uh, full-featured, comprehensive, uh, and I think that uh, it's going to work out fine. But I just did the install. Uh, the install went smoothly. Um, it's it's a little bit it's similar to Ubuntu except um, when you get to the uh, partitioning. I already had a partition designated f uh, on my hard drive, uh, and actually it's not an easy install on my system because the hard drive it's an SSD, and I have three partitions for three different systems, three different Linux distributions that I'm trying and so I was replacing one of those three with Sparky so I had to designate the partition that I wanted to install the uh, the root partition and or the home partition and then I designated a, a small swap partition which I have on the SSD um, and also I did a, an EFI install um, and so since I already had that disk configured for EFI installs and the other systems were installed with EFI. I basically just designated that existing EFI boot petition which is at the front end of the disk, it's the first petition. And I designated that as the location of the bootloader, um, ran the install. Now the, the difference between the Debian and the Ubuntu is since I have a Broadcom Wi-Fi driver in this particular computer, uh, Ubuntu picks it up uh, and will let me uh, configure it for Wi-Fi even before I do the install. It will see my networks, it will let me select one of the networks and I can use that to download updates during the install. Debian, as I had mentioned before, doesn't see Broadcom uh, Wi-Fi drivers right out of the box. And so I had to hook up an, an Ethernet cable to the computer. And once I did that, of course, it recognized that it was connected to the Internet and I was able to finish the install. Now, I didn't film the install because, um, obvious reasons, when you're doing a, a hard drive install, um, you have to be able to install the necessary software. And I didn't, I didn't want to go through that. I didn't expect it would be that unusual where I needed to document it on video. So I have the install completed. And right now, the only thing I've done, I've added GUVC View and I added Kazam, which is the screen recorder that I'm using for this video. So up in the top left, you'll see this little icon and uh, that's the up system upgrade tool. I clicked on that and basically it did a um, pseudo app get update. So it basically identified any uh, software that needed to be updated and now it's asking me to upgrade the system. So I'm going to do that and guys I'm going to change my glasses because those are bifocals and I have some computer glasses so that I can see the screen without having to keep raising my head. Okay, so <clears throat> now it's telling me that we need to get 549 megabytes of archives. 331 additional disk space will be used. So I am going to upgrade the system now. Okay, so I'm going to push that off to the side so we can review the, uh, the menus. Now, this is the Mate version of Sparky Linux. They do have a uh, an XFCE version and they do have uh, I believe KDE uh, so they have I think three or four different versions but it, they're all Debian installs uh, so they are not Ubuntu they are all Debian installs so keep that in mind now 
they have uh, an install an installer for legacy systems and for uh, EFI so let's go through the systems now there were a um, the the download was 1.7 gigabytes which is rather large but because it's a Debian system they have included a lot of uh, utilities uh, basically to maintain your system and so uh, that accounts for some of it but let's take a look at what comes with it out of the box for accessories Compton manager which is a uh, uh, it's kinda like a comp is <laughs> conkey manager these are all installed out of the box archive manager eraser calculator parcelite pluma text editor file search screenshot USB formatter and image writer and XF burn for CDs and DVDs. Education just LibreOffice Math. Games just play on Linux. Graphics. Camerama webcam viewer. I've never heard of that. I'll check that out later. Uh, Eye of Mate image viewer. GNU GIMP. Uh, image Magic. And LibreOffice Draw. Simple scan. For internet, GFTP, hex chat, ice dub, ice weasel. Don't know what that one is. Liferia, uh, pigeon, transmission, trippial, and you get. Uh, I think that's a you uh, get is a download manager. For office, document viewer, dictionary, install office suite. Looks like it's already installed. I'm not sure what that is for. Uh, sound and video. <laughs> Excel GUVC view which I installed now there's a, a, a link here to install multimedia codex which I can't do until the system has been updated but I will go through that Kazam which I installed Mate volume control radio tray record my desktop haven't used that um, I understand that's a, kind of like a Kazam simple screen recorder I'll take a look at that at some point. VLC and XF Burn, and then System Tools uh, about Sparky Linux. Okay, so it's basically a configuration. It's a snapshot of of uh, my system and time zone. So, just a little bit of information on the system. Kaja file manager disk usage GDB GEXEC language log file Mate system monitor Mate terminal midnight commander which is a I think that's a root type file manager uh, power statistics report bug root terminal Sparky apt us apt us sparky apt us extra don't know what those are uh, let's see keep your system up to date and clean install and remove packages so that's probably a link to synaptic this is to install extra applications from the sparky linux repository system profiler now this is um, if you wanted to install this uh, it goes under the name hard info so if you do sudo app get install hard info all one word it will install this system and basically it's a comprehensive um, listing of everything you needed to know about your system and the hardware installed on it so you can see that I have a uh, i7-4790 um, so it's a it's a strong processor 32 gigs of memory Sparky Linux uh, now it doesn't it's not configured yet <clears throat> for my Nvidia graphics card I mentioned to you that Nvidia doesn't always play well with uh, Debian right out of the box so I might have to do some work on that but all the input devices and no printer yet um, and I sh in a previous video I showed you how to 
configure your printer. I happen to have a brother printer, so it configures. Brother's pretty good about providing Linux drivers, but um, it's pretty easy. To, I'll get that set up later. So it's got my headset, and let's see. These are all the uh, audio input devices. So uh, that and the operating system, this is a pretty nice program. If you're not uh, familiar with it, it's called Hard Info. You can uh, install that and it'll give you information on your entire system. Very, very nice package. And as you can see, this system is still updating. So we will let that finish. Get back to uh, now uh, system upgrade, which is this what, what I'm using right now. So system upgrade is the uh, a tool to basically identify the software in your system that needs to be updated, and then it will take care of it for you. And let's see a terminal wine wrapper to install. EXE applications and then universal access there is a virtual keyboard that you can put on your screen places <clears throat> these are all the hard drives connected and the network shares <clears throat> excuse me guys <clears throat> preferences device driver manager this is what interests me because I want to see this is the first time I've ever seen a device driver manager on a Debian system and so I want to see whether or not this uh, is able to configure my Broadcom and my Nvidia so I will be taking a look at that screensaver startup applications so as you can see it is a full featured comprehensive system and I don't see any uh, any glaring shortcomings or weaknesses for administration we've got firewall configuration have to unlock that first And we will turn that on. And it's telling me my wireless keyboard battery is low. And this synaptic package manager, so evidently the other one is something different. And then we've got a control center. <coughs> which appears to be very comprehensive. This looks to be an, uh, an excellent system. From what I can see, <clears throat> it is far more comprehensive than the typical Debian system. And as I said, that device driver manager, we're going to take a look at that now. Let's see. Hmm. Q to quit. So it looks like it may be done. <coughs> no, actually it wasn't done. <coughs> so now it's going through the rest of the configuration. So I'm going to click on this device driver manager and see what that entails. So far it entails nothing. Nothing came up. Now I'm not sure if that cannot be activated during this upgrade. So I am going to pause the video until this upgrade finishes and then I will be back with you. 
Okay guys, the update is finished. Uh, it took another at least five or six minutes. A pretty extensive uh, upgrade. And so it, it is done. So what we're going to do is we're going to check out the driver manager to see if this is an improvement over a typical Debian system. Okay, so it's identified my NVIDIA uh, card and uh, uh, looks like it's still analyzing. Well, that's that's all it did. So it did not it did not uh, identify my Broadcom Wi-Fi. So we are going to install and again this is a step in the right direction because this is the first Debian system that I've installed that has found my NVIDIA graphics card and given me the option to install it. So this normally doesn't take too long. I may have to reboot uh, in order to uh, start the NVIDIA uh, to reconfigure the system but I will let it go through the install process and then once we come back I will attempt to configure my well, actually I'll probably do that before I reboot I will attempt to configure my Broadcom Wi-Fi now I did a video uh, the other day about configuring NVIDIA and Broadcom in a Debian system so I'm going to use those same instructions to get uh, my Broadcom Wi-Fi drivers working. That way I can disconnect this Ethernet cable. As you can see up in the top right all I have is a wired connection. There are no Wi-Fi connections available at the moment. Okay so it's telling me that the uh, original Nuvo uh, graphics driver has been replaced by the uh, NVIDIA kernel and so there's a conflict obviously and so it's telling me the easiest way to fix it is to reboot the machine once the installation has finished and so I will do that but I think I will go ahead and now you will need to restart your system okay so I'm gonna quit and just for the heck of it I am going to open up a terminal and see if I can uh, get my Broadcom uh, let's see okay I'm gonna see if I can get my Broadcom Wi-Fi configured now I copied my instructions and it's a simple command it's in my documents okay so for Broadcom um, I'm, I have not added contrib and non-free to my sources yet so I'm going to see if this recognizes this command it may not okay it does now let's see and I think this uh, is based on it on the Debian testing and so I think that's why it I did not have to add contrib and non free so as you can see I just put sudo sudo app get install broadcom sta dkms now it should go through locate my broadcom and install the drivers necessary to activate my Wi-Fi. This normally doesn't take long. It should uh, immediately identify my Wi-Fi networks. Okay, so it is done. I'm going to close this out and close this out and close this out. And 
nothing yet. So we are going to reboot. I'll be back with you in a couple minutes and we'll see what's going on with my NVIDIA and my Broadcom Wi-Fi. Okay guys, I'm back and as you can see, I've got the conky going now on the right hand side. Um, once I rebooted, it uh, took care of a lot of the <coughs> upgrades to the system. Now, the moment of truth. Let's take a look at first we'll look at the Wi-Fi and there we go okay so my Wi-Fi uh, networks are configured and I will I will connect And let's see. <clears throat> and it is still connecting. Which is typical because I have an extender on this uh, network. And so it does typically take a little bit longer. But now it is connected. As you can see, I got the little pop up message and uh, I am now connected to my Wi-Fi network. So if I disconnect my wired connection, as you can see, there is my Wi-Fi icon in the top right. So now I am running strictly on my Wi-Fi network. And we're gonna test that out with a browser ice weasel and let's take a look at uh, sparky linux okay so we are in business now that's the wi-fi now we'll take a look at my NVIDIA card. NVIDIA server settings. And my NVIDIA card, I am running the NVIDIA driver 340.76. That's the best you're going to do through the standard Debian repositories. The the current driver from NVIDIA for Linux, this particular graphics card, is 352, I believe. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. That's fine. 340.76. Um, you can uh, download, and there is a way to download and install the and install the latest NVIDIA driver, but that's not always the wisest thing to do. This 340.76 is the latest. NVIDIA driver that has been tested by the Debian system uh, and confirmed to be appropriate for uh, for operation. So we're going to leave it just as it is. I'm not going to try to upgrade that. That's probably just asking for trouble. So I'm going to quit that and you can see the uh, Sparky Linux website. I will say that this Debian distribution has to be the easiest Debian install that I have ever done. Um, I am extremely impressed with it and I believe they have included a multitude of useful features. I highly recommend it. I will use it uh, as my day-to-day -day system since it is installed to the hard drive. I'm going to use it as my day-to-day -day system for uh, the foreseeable future and I will let you know if any negatives arise but right now I'd have to give it a um, a glowing recommendation uh, so that's about it guys if you have any questions post them in the comments 
Uh, if you could rate, comment, and subscribe, I would appreciate that. And take a look at my website. As I mentioned, I got some feedback that the, the website is loading fairly quickly. So looks like some of the uh, some of the changes that I made are taking effect. That's uh, SeniorTechAndTravel.com. Uh, and also, guys, I want you to know that there are no ads on my website. This is not a money-making venture. This is something I enjoy. You won't find any ads on my website. And it is safe. It's monitored daily. Uh, there is no malware. Um, it actually costs me some money to uh, ma maintain the security of the website because I don't want to cause any difficulties for anybody. So it is a safe and secure website. And there's a lot of content on there that you might enjoy reading. Um, I've been doing it for quite a while and I do have quite a bit of uh, content and I do hope that you enjoy it. Give me some feedback on that if you, if you can. Uh, I would appreciate it. I'm always trying to improve. So uh, that's it for Sparky Linux. It is a really, really nice uh, distribution. Highly recommended. And um, give it a shot um, if you're looking for an easy to use Debian install. As I said, they do have XFCE, KDE, Mate. I'm using the Mate version. I did download the, the XFCE, XFCE version because normally that's the desktop environment that I prefer but um, I loaded up the Mate version first so I'm going to run that for the foreseeable future. Okay guys take care and I'll see you next time.